Good afternoon. My name is Manuel Paloma. I came from the University of Cadiz in Spain. And I will talk about an experience we made trying to identify learning profiles in foreign language learning uh, by using uh, virtual words. OK, I will make an introduction to our problem, the design architecture we used, and the case study we conducted, both settings and analysis, and finally, conclusions. Well, the, the main issue here is that uh, in, with the Bologna process, we have very few hours of face-to-face uh, <coughs> -face teaching and a lot of hours of independent learning. This is especially an issue with language learning, that you need a lot of hours of face-to-face -face conversation. Uh, and it's difficult to apply to see how, if students really uh, conversate outside of the classroom with people of the same level and so. So we propose using a 3D virtual world uh, with a simple game uh, to encourage independent learning, to improve communication skills, it's a collaborative uh, game, and to provide a fun and natural way of learning for, for young students. And the main aim here was to see if students really benefited from the experience and, and, and if they did uh, all of them or not equally and so. For our learning virtual world, we use the Open Simulator uh, world, uh, virtual world engine. Mm -hmm. It follows a client-server architecture where two students can interact using their own laptops. And this is the game we implemented. The game has two levels and focuses especially in, in seeing how to uh, learn in the the changing prepositions of German language. I, I don't know German, but okay. But according to the to the teacher, they say that it's a real problem for Spanish students learning how to to change the the words, because it's not the same way. If you have a bottle on the table or you have it behind the table, you have to use the, the accusative or dative and change according to gender. And it's a real nightmare for our students. So in this case, uh, the students had to play this first level uh, alone. It was a single player level in about 30 minutes. And then the most interesting part is this one, where two students interact trying to tidy a room. Hmm? We create a story saying that you had a party last night and now your parents are coming to your room. And there is one student, this one, who knows how everything has to be in the room where it has to be your backpack, your chair, your lamp, and so, but it's not able to move. And then the other <coughs> student is able to move things, but she doesn't know where to place them. Mm -hmm. So they have to interact using a text chat to tell the other, hey, put this, this thing on the table and put this thing down, and usually they interact saying, is this here or on the other side or whatever. Uh, we made the, the case study in an undergraduate course, University of Cadiz in Spain. Uh, students have previously made a, a course hmm, of German level, A1.1 level, and then in this one is 1A.2. One hmm. uh, we have 48 hours of face to face teaching and 102 hours of independent learning. And we had 99 students who made all the experiment, and we had all the, all the scores. We made a, a first we made a pretest to see the initial level. Then students played the game taking one role. We made a, a pretest. Students played the game again by changing roles. We made a second test. And then we also made a TAM model, a technology acceptance model questionnaire to see the, the attitude toward the, the virtual world. Well, first the, we analyzed the, the time-based questionnaire, and results were very good. They usually uh, say that they really think that the game helped them to interact with others, helped them to foster vocabulary learning, and, f and make them increase their grammar knowledge. And all of them said that they were. They said that they were very 
comfortable using the, the virtual world and show no, no problem using the, the technology. This is how they usually play it, with a laptop and the headset. And we were, there was a, a teacher watching that they didn't speak or use other way to communicate, just the, the text chat. I don't know if you can see it here. And then uh, we, we made a, we applied a, a data, mining, data mining technique to, to analyze the results. We used the, a simple and very popular technique. It's the K-means algorithm. It, it basically summarizes the, the behavior of a whole group in small groups of individuals who behave in a similar way. Uh, we made a first approach using only three, three attributes for the clustering. We used uh, an exercise in the pretest where the students have to write a paragraph describing the position of different objects in a picture we showed. So we, we took an, into account the number of words that the students wrote, the ratio of le lexical mistakes per written word, because sometimes uh, one student can write double of words than others, so it's uh, a ratio that could, what we thought it could be better. And also the ratio of grammar errors per written word again. And we sometimes check the grades in previous courses to see if there was any kind of correlation. Here are our findings. Uh, first, according to the lexical clustering, the vocabulary learning, we saw a general constant improvement from the pre-test to the first post-test and to the second post-test. Here I, I have a chart, hmm? for example. Uh, here we have four clusters, zero, one, two, and three. And here in cluster zero and one, which are those with this blue star and this triangle, red triangle, we have, if you see here, the same starting level this is the pretest and this is the post test, the second post test. So all of these students have a very similar starting level, but some of them really improved, hmm? having between zero and 0 0.1 mistakes per written word, and this didn't improve so much. Hmm? They were go very good students if we check their previous grades in the first course, and the only difference we saw is that Students in cluster one, those who no, it's cluster zero. Those who wrote more words improve more, hmm? and we cannot say sure that this is the a really a relation that that must be hold always. But in this case, it hold. Then also we have the cluster two with half of the class. Hmm? They were good at previewing oral skills, only oral skills. And they did a grief improvement only in the second post test. Mm? It seems that probably they have some problems to uh, start using the game for the first time, but after the second time, they did really improve. And it's those students here. Mm? And finally, about one quarter of the students wrote very few words all along the test. They were very good, the best group according to the writing grades in previously courses. And we have no explanation. Perhaps they didn't feel comfortable with the game. Mm, it's it's uh, the, the TAM question that we made was anonymous, so we cannot correlate. But it seems that students perhaps enjoyed the game, but they didn't learn that much, or they didn't feel so comfortable for, for learning that way. Sorry. It's the same, yeah. According to the grammatical clustering, the class only improved after the second post test. Uh, I mean, they have to play twice the game to learn the, the grammar. Half of the class hmm, who had good participation in the previous courses did the outstanding final results, hmm, were the, the very best. And then it was interesting, we have three groups with the same final level, but from different, they got to the final level from different steps. Mm -hmm. There were two groups with the same poor, a really poor pretest level. 
There was one group who always wrote a very average number of words in the exercises and they improved little by little, started from the first test. But there is other group who only wrote a reasonable number of words in the second test. I mean, in the, in the pre-test after playing one once, and perhaps they needed, they, uh, they needed a second round of, um, of playing the game to, to be able to, to learn. And then there is again a, a small group of students, something between the other two, who were good, our previous participation grade, but again, they were, they had a, a quite average level, so perhaps they, again, didn't feel comfortable with the game or, or something. And finally, if we make a uh, clustering according to lexical and grammatical clustering, both, we have also interesting results. First, about 40% of the students who were very good in the pretest obtained the best final results. So it's mean, it probably is interesting that to be the best at the end, you have to good, have a good uh, background, mm, especially balanced, mm, maybe in lexical and grammatical. Mm. And they were confident and they usually more wrote more words than the average. And then there are four clusters who have similar number of uh, students, they four. Mm. Two of them were good, our previous task in the previous courses. The cluster C0 were good at oral task and, and had aver average writing skills in the second post test. And there is a group who made an effort to write more, but they didn't get good results at all. And finally, these two groups, one was poor in vocabulary, good in grammar, but the other was the opposite. So as a conclusion, uh, First, we we well, it's not there, but we are happy with the experience. It, it, I think with the students learning, it was interesting, but they really needed a lot of resources. We were not able. We would very we took very long time to to make the experience because the student has to play the game in pairs. Uh, students about the students they felt comfortable with the game. Also, some students even decrease their, their grades compared to previous semester. So perhaps it seems that they really enjoyed playing a game, especially the collaborative uh, part, but they didn't learn that much, probably, some, some of them. Hmm? And we have some particular insights. Hmm? It seems that having good oral skills in previous semester influenced the vocabulary. Hmm? It's something that we discovered, it was also that good, but not necessarily brilliant students in previous courses, if they have a good participation, hmm, they are the best students in learning grammar with the, with the game. And there is a scarce, a limited relation to previous grades in the, in the mixed analysis. Hmm. Another interesting conclusion I, I tell before is that sometimes students seem to need a, a second uh, to need to play the game twice to get the, the real learning. Mm? So perhaps they, again, they felt happy with the experience, but they, if they didn't have played twice, they mm, didn't have learned that much. Mm? As a future work, we would like to analyze the game chat logs. Mm? That is, you know, uh, we have 100, well, not 100 students who played twice, so we have 100 game chat logs written in German, so the German teacher is analyzing them little by little to see how they learned and how they interacted and so. Sometimes we are discovering that they are using sometimes Spanish words, so we have to see how they communicated. And we also like to apply other clustering techniques or association rules to, to discover more relation between the data. Okay. Here you have in the in this address you have the information if you want. Thank you for your attention.